Hi, I'm Bethany Pratt with the Jefferson County Cooperative Extension Service in Louisville, Kentucky, and I'm the agent for horticulture education. Today we're going to be talking about fall planting. So we're going to be thinking about all the great things we can plant, and I'm going to show you how to plant some seeds and transplant some fall greens. We're in my front yard, and as you can see, it's already really full of stuff, right? Mostly perennial wildflowers. So we're going to be planting in about a four by five foot area, and that's going to be more than enough for my family of three. All right, so August is the best time to start thinking about transitions. We're going back to school or maybe back to work. It's also time to start thinking about a fall garden. Um, as a way to get started, um, the University of Kentucky Extension Service has this great publication, Home Vegetable Gardening in Kentucky. It's available online and also at county offices throughout the state. Um, in here on page 16, I just thought, there we go. We have a table that has some crops for the fall garden. Um, so if you're kind of stuck on where to go or you're only thinking about lettuce, um, tomatoes, um, this has a great list of different things ranging from beets and cabbage and cauliflower to kale, potatoes, snow peas, spinach, and turnip greens. Okay, I'm going to think about preparing my garden space. I've got a really small section right here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take a soil sample. All the food that plants need to grow is in the ground. So knowing the food that's there before you start planting or even adding anything is going to help your plants get the best start. So if you're starting from a mulch space like I am, the first thing we're going to do is rake back the mulch. If you're planting into a yard or space that maybe has other vegetation on top, you want to remove that vegetation first. So I'm going to take a minute and rake back the mulch to expose the dirt, the soil. I'm gonna need two cups of soil from this area. I'm gonna take about six to eight samples throughout my garden site in order to make sure that I can get a picture of the entire nutrient profile. So I've got my clean tool. This is a soil knife, but you can use a shovel, a spoon, any other kind of thing that you have to dig into the soil. That's about six inches deep. I like the soil knife because it's got a little um, graduated piece on here so I know how far I'm going. Um, the six inches is because most vegetable plants that you're putting in the ground, their roots are going to go about six inches deep. So knowing the nutrients of that first six inches of your soil is going to be really important. So I'm going to, from there I've got my hole, I'm going to take a little scoop, I'm going to pick up my soil and I'm going to put it into my bag. And I'm going to just keep repeating this process throughout my entire planting area. And if I have more than two cups of soil, that's okay. Two cups is the absolute minimum that the lab needs in order to take a good result. So I'm going to move over here now to the opposite end, put it in the bag. So I'm going to try to hit all four corners and kind of the center, maybe in one or two spots in my garden space. That way I've got a big picture of what the soil, the, the nutrients might be like in all the soil. All right. So all this soil, I'm just going to kind of mix it into my bag. It has been raining a lot in Louisville recently, so my soil's pretty wet. So I'm actually going to leave the bag open inside for a couple days to let it dry out before I take this in. So any of your county extension offices will accept soil samples. They are either free of, ch free of charge or there is a minimal cost associated with them. So to call your local extension office to find out details about that. While I'm waiting for my soil test results to come back, I'm going to go ahead and prepare my garden area. So I've pulled back the mulch that I'm using as a ground cover, and I'm going to take the shovel and I'm going to turn my soil over. Um, what this is doing is this is kind of help breaking up any large pieces of soil, um, reducing some compaction that might be there. And if I need to add any amendments like compost, I have some nice loose soil and it'll be easier to work it in. Finally, having loose soil, it's kind of like having a nice soft bed for your baby plants. So it makes it much easier for the roots of plants, whether they're transplanting or for new seeds to take hold. So you want to work up your soil. So to help me remember where I've planted and where I haven't, I'll work one kind of section that my row is going to be where I plan to plant. I'll plant it and then I'll start digging my next section. That way I don't triple or double or triple plant into that same area all, all at once. So I've got my soil worked up and I'm gonna add some compost. 
Um, for my soil sample results, my soil is a little low in nitrogen. Um, so I have some compost that's made with a lot of decomposed chicken manure that I'm going to add in to really kind of give my plants the head start that they need. So to do that, I've just got my wheelbarrow here. I'm going to scoop out a shovel full. I've got a pretty small area, so I'm not, I don't need very much. I'm going to sprinkle it across the top. And then I'm going to work this in. I'm going to turn my soil over again. Plants use their roots to, to get up the nutrients from the, from the soil. So having your compost or other plant food, like a fertilizer, in the ground, underground, is the best way for your plants to get their food. So just spending a little time turning in your compost. OK, the first thing I'm going to plant is spinach. If you are new to gardening or planting, seed packets are really the best way to go because they have directions on the back of them. So this kind of tells you all the things you need to know in order to plant. So before you start putting any seeds in the ground, take a moment and read the back of the package. We don't want to dig a hole because this seed says it only needs to be a half inch in the ground. So that's roughly about the distance of your first knuckle. So if you kind of Think about that. So we really need a shallow hole for that plant, for that seed. And then from here, it says seed spacing. And this one says a group of th three seeds every six inches. So that's where I'm going to get my soil knife out when I get into the ground. That way I can measure and count. And then from here, it says days to emerge, five to 10 days. So in about a week after I plant these, I should start to see little baby plants coming out of the ground, which is exciting. This is also good, right? It'll let you know if you've done it right. Because after we bury those seeds in the ground, you may not think that you've done anything or you may not see anything for a couple days. So that's a good marker. All right, so I'm going to move over and start planting. So I'm going to use my soil knife, or you can use your hand, depending on your comfort level. And you're just going to put a very, very shallow line into the soil here. And you can kind of check it with your finger, right? Because we only need up to your very first knuckle deep. Um, you can also just make a line with your, with your hand if you're more comfortable doing that too. All right, so from here I'm gonna open my packet. And my instructions say a group of three seeds every six inches. So spinach seeds are pretty large, so this is pretty easy. So I'm gonna pour some seeds into my hand and you can see the spinach seeds. So I'm gonna pick up three is the very best I can. I'm going to put them, in the, put them into the little row that I've made. I'm going to use my soil knife. Or if you don't have a soil knife, you can use your hand. Um, from fingertip to wrist is about six inches. So if you don't have a measuring tape or a measuring tool, you can just use your hand too. So I'm going to measure and use my soil knife. And then I've got another six inches. So I'm going to put another three seeds. And I like to leave all my seeds uncovered while I'm planting. That way I can see where I've planted and where I haven't. And I'm going to kind of keep going on down my line. And if you drop a seed, or maybe I think I only got two in that last one and four in this one, it's OK. Why your packet will tell you to maybe only have one or two seeds in a space is because plants can't get up and go to the refrigerator or walk away from another plant. So if you have a whole bunch of plants crowded together, then they're all competing with each other for food, and none of them will get very big. So you won't get to eat them. Um, so that plant spacing is really important. All right, so I have finished planting my row of seeds. I have extra, which is OK. I'm going to come back and plant some more spinach in a couple weeks because my packet says I can plant these every two weeks until four weeks before the frost. So I've got another month that I can keep planting spinach. That way I'll be harvesting spinach to eat up probably until Thanksgiving, which is pretty exciting. Got my seeds planted. Um, we talked about how before I kind of cultivate a little bit at a time so I remember where where things are planted. The other thing that I highly recommend is making a tag of some kind to also help you remember not only what you planted, but the date for when you planted it. Um, so, Because if you remember on our seed packet, it says that the spinach will emerge in five to 10 days. 
So if you're like me, you forget what day of the week you planted something. So if you put at least the month and the day down, in two or three weeks, if you walk out and you're like, I think I planted something there, but I don't remember when, you can check the date and see, oh, I planted this on August the 4th. And then, you know, you can look and see, is it sprouting or not, and figure out if you need to replant or just help you remember what's even in the ground. So I'm gonna put my tag in the ground and I'm just gonna lightly cover my seeds. Remember, they only need a half inch of soil. Kentucky tends to have some more clay soil. Um, and in addition here, it's been raining a whole bunch. So some of my soil, even though it's pretty well drained, is clumped. So I'm just gonna kind of break it up to make sure that it is really, really easy for my seeds to germinate. It is super tempting to like smash them down to make sure that those seeds stay in there. But the good news is they're not gonna walk away. So just leave that nice fluffy soil, give them a happy place to grow. All right, so I've got my spinach in here and now I'm gonna take a break. I'm gonna cultivate my next row and I'm gonna transplant some arugula into that space because I'm ready to have some leafy greens. And so I bought some little plants in order to make them ready to go. So I'm gonna use my shovel again, kind of turn over the soil just like the first time. And I like to leave about a shovel's width in between that way as I'm making a new row, I don't accidentally dig up my first seeds. So I'm flipping over my soil breaking up any big chunks of soil that might be there. All right, so turn my soil. I'm gonna add more compost again um, because that's what my soil sample recommended. So I'm gonna sprinkle a couple shovelfuls of compost over the top. And if you do not make compost at home, um, there is commercially available compost too at a lot of garden centers. Um, it will often be labeled compost. You can also buy composted manures from different animals as well. Um, so animal manures from like cow or chicken are really high in nitrogen um, and can be great sources of organic fertilizer for your garden. Um, and just, I know especially here, if you've got a local garden center, if they don't have it in stock, they will order it for you. It's also with fall seeds too. So be sure you're checking out, shopping local, and visiting those small centers. Those folks know what they're doing as well and will help you get what you need. So this is my arugula right here. Um, this happens to be in one three inch pot. Uh, most people have probably bought transplants where they come in individual cell packs. Um, and if you're just starting out, doing an individual cell pack is easier because you're only gonna have one or two plants per cell. Um, this one, it's gonna take a little more work because I'm gonna have to use my fingers to divide the plants. Um, but it's a personal preference, um, so you can think about what you wanna do. This also might be what it would look like if you were to seed something in a container at your house too. So one of the advantage to doing transplants overseas, over seeds, is the time it takes to harvest. So this little transplant right here versus this is the same seeds right here, right? These little seeds have already been growing for about four weeks. So they have a four week head start over these seeds. So I could think about in my own garden, I could plant, transplant some of these guys today and then also plant seeds. So that as my transplants are kind of finishing out their season, they're starting to die off, my seeds will just be starting to mature. So then I'll have a continuous run of mixed greens to go in my garden and to eat in my kitchen. So those are just some different strategies that you can think about, um, depending on what's available locally near you and then how long you want to harvest the things to eat. Sometimes these plant, your transplants will have a tag on them that also have planting instructions. These, however, do not. So I am referring to Home Vegetable Gardening in Kentucky. In the back, there's a glossary of all different kinds of plants. Um, and that will also have planting instructions. So I'm referring to this to figure out how far apart I need to put my transplants. As transplants spaced 12 to 18 inches apart in rows that are 20 inches apart. All right, so I've got my spacing measured. Next thing I'm gonna do is start to pull my plants apart. 
So the most important part of a plant when we're transplanting is the roots. So we really want to work to make the roots, to keep the roots intact as much as possible. The final um, piece of planting is watering. Um, plants like a nice gentle rain shower, just like we all do. If you are using a garden hose, I would suggest getting a nozzle that actually has a setting that says shower on it. Or you can use a low flow um, hose so that kind of the water drips out. And if you're watering, we want to ideally, for plants, get low below the leaves and hold, put water on there for about 10 seconds. So just enough for the water to slowly percolate into the ground. Even with this, I'm trying my very best not to blast my plants. And we can see that the soil is, is settling as the water, the pressure of the water pushes that soil down. So I'm actually going to come back and add just a little more soil around the top as I go. Another way to help prevent shock is to keep watering. So newly transplanted things need water every day, so about a quarter to a half an inch of water every day, or that 10 seconds, for the first week after they have been transplanted. So it's a good time to watch the weather. If we're going to get rain, you probably do not need to go out and water. Like it rained here yesterday. Um, I still want to go ahead and water my plants to make sure that they are getting what they need. So the more water we have in here, the easier it's going to be for the plant to start getting itself reestablished. It's not going to be stressed out trying to find its water and its food source. We're providing it for it. If you've just planted seeds, we also want to water, right? That same gentle rain shower. And you're just going to move the, the gentle rain shower back and forth across that seed bed area. And even getting a little bit outside of where you think your seeds are. It's really hard to tell now exactly where they are. And again, we're going to do this for about 10 seconds every day and until your plants emerge. And then you want to think about continuing to water for the next two weeks once you have your seedlings up. And that's, again, to make sure that your little plants are not working hard to get the food that they need in order to grow. So that's it. That's all my plants need for water, and I will check back in on them tomorrow and give them some more water. Composting is a great way to reduce your um, waste at home and also to create some wonderful soil that you can use later in your garden. Um, I've got with me here kind of the two key ingredients. The first are your green ingredients, or your kind of recently alive things is what I like to think of them as. And this is just vegetable scraps from my kitchen. Um, so I keep this bucket in my kitchen and when I'm cooking with anything from my garden or from the farmer's market, any kind of vegetable ends like this beet top, the leaves from onions, celery, this is a pepper top, all of that goes in this bucket. And then when it's full, I bring it out to my compost pile. So I got my greens and then to complement it, I have some browns, right? This happens to be wood shavings and um, manure for my chicken coop, but browns can be a lot of other things. If you don't have chickens, you can use things like newspaper, shredded cardboard. Any kind of paper or wood-based material makes a really good brown to mix in. And our kind of our ratio here is two parts green. Our green vegetable scraps add water, um, a lot of nitrogen into our mixture. But with that, they also can come with some stink. So this is getting a little, little smelly in here because it's been sitting in my home for a couple days. The browns are going to soak up that moisture and add a carbon base. Um, so we want to add one part green to two part browns to our compost to try to take a mixture. In front of me here, I have a pretty basic backyard composting system. Um, I built it out of old pallets. Um, that I found on the side of the road. There are many correct ways to build a compost bin. The simplest one is to just make a pile in your backyard. Um, however, if you're like me and live in the city, your neighbors may not like that so much. So having some kind of contained area can really help with that. 
um, using wire, um, even buying a compost tubbler or a trash can that you can compost things into are all really great containers to kind of store your compost. So for my specific system, I have my bins here and I just kind of add things as a pile. So I'm going to take my vegetable scraps. I'm just going to dump them on my pile here. And I've got two options. So I could either take a shovel and stir this in. That's if I'm feeling really ambitious. If I'm not feeling so ambitious, I'm going to get a couple scoops. And really, ideally, I'm probably going to pour all of this on here of my chicken bedding and put it on top. And what this chicken bedding is, so if I put more than that two parts on there, like I'm gonna do here, this means I'm not gonna turn it, but this bedding is gonna kind of act as a cap and kind of keep the smell down for my compost. Um, I've got houses that live all around me and neighbors, and I wanna be nice to my neighbors and kind of keep the smell down. So really, you can think about layering it with greens and browns and always capping with your brown layer to keep your smell down. And if that's the way you're doing it, so I'm just kind of going to put my browns on there. And um, I could just walk away from my compost at this point and just kind of let it alone. This is kind of the laziest method of composting that you could have. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave it. And then in another week or two, when I've got another full bucket of greens, I'm going to get, take them out, put them just right on top of those browns that I've got, and then add more browns again. It's a good way to help me to remember to clean out my chicken coop. Or maybe if you're at your own home to take out those recycled um, cereal boxes and just lay them right on top and you can leave it. And this is kind of a lasagna method. So you just kind of layer things up. And if I want to keep doing this, I'm going to keep doing it until my bin gets totally full. Um, air is really important for composting because it causes aerobic breakdown. So when we, if you think about that Tupperware that you leave in the back of the fridge that really stinks when you open it, that's anaerobic decomposition. So that smell is what happens is when there's not air mixed in and things start to really stink. And that can happen to your compost too. So giving things a turn in order to add some air is a great way to help keep your compost from smelling. Um, so for this lasagna system, I've got my greens and my browns. I'm going to stack it all the way up, and then I'm just going to turn it once. So I'm actually going to take my shovel. This is a good workout. Shovel everything up and over into the next bin. And then I'm just going to let it sit again. Not going to touch it, and I'm going to go back to adding to my first bin those layers of greens and browns. And then if you can look over here, I've got plenty of heat and soil and the compost on the left is finished and it's been there for about two months. The more heat we add to compost, so particularly spring and summer, the faster things decompose. Um, so you can have compost using a lasagna method done in about two months in the summer. In the winter, when it's colder outside and our compost doesn't stay as hot as long, it takes a lot longer. So it takes about four months using a lasagna method in the winter to both build up enough material and then also for it to get hot enough to start to decompose. All right, so using kind of the lazy lasagna composting method, um, you can take a look at how in two months, I've got something that looks exactly like soil um, that I can lift up and you can put this in your garden in a flowering pot. Um, or use it around your house or even give it to friends and neighbors who are gardening. If you've still got big chunks when you're working it, just coming back once or twice to kind of turn it over, kind of help break up those chunks, add a little more air in, it'll kind of help complete the process. And you'll be ready to go with your own nutrient-rich soil to compost. Gardening and composting can be very, very easy and don't need a lot of space. I'm growing food to feed three people in about 16 square feet, and you can do as much or as little as you want. If you're just getting started, start small. Reach out to your local county extension office for resources on home gardening and also on home composting. The folks at your county offices are great resources and are happy to talk you through how to get things started and how to best utilize the space that you have.